Good morning, I'm Mr. Priscilla, and today I wanted to talk about derivatives of natural exponential and lo natural logarithmic functions for my Math 1325 class. Now let's just make sure we remember what I'm talking about. The natural uh, exponential function is the function y equals or f of x equals e to the x. Remember that e, the irrational number, that's approximately 2.718. The natural, log, uh, the natural logarithm, I'll just call it the natural log, uh, logarithm function. The natural logarithm function is y equals, we denote it with an ln, it's the logarithmic function to the base e. So I know y'all have seen those in your previous math classes, and some of y'all I taught the stuff to you, so, so I know you've seen it. And what we want to do is differentiate these. First of all, let's start with the uh, uh, derivative of e to the x. And, oh, and by the way, yes, these are new derivative formulas you'll need to memorize. This is the derivative with respect to x of e to the x. The derivative of e to the x, that's the easiest function you'll ever have to differentiate. It's just e to the x. As long as just e to a single variable, the derivative is e to that single variable in terms of that variable. Now, I want to generalize this though. Suppose we had, mm, we wanted to find the derivative with respect to x of e. Suppose the exponent is something, uh, something other than just x. Say it's a function of x. It's not just a single letter. If it's e to something other than a single letter, you use the chain rule. Now, the, uh, last time we used the generalized power rule, and I said we wouldn't see much uh, uh, many uses for the chain rule until we got here. Now we're going to use the chain rule. That you differentiate the outer function, that uh, natural exponential function, that's just e to the power. The derivative of e to the power is e to the power. But then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So you diff multiply by the derivative of the exponent. So the derivative of e to an exponent is e to the exponent times the derivative of that exponent. Then realize what's the derivative of uh, x. The derivative of x is just a 1. So this is just a generalized, uh, gen this is the first one, it's just a specific case of the second one you can think of. Now for natural logarithms, the derivative with respect to x of ln x is just 1 over x. And if this were a regular calculus course, we'd be going through, we could use our limit definition of derivative and derive all of these, okay? Here, I'm not going to make you, uh, uh, you're not responsible for the derivations, but you're going to have to be able to use these uh, derivative formulas. Suppose it's ln something other than just a single x. The derivative with respect to x of the natural log of a function of x. The argument, the thing that follows the ln, that's what goes in the denominator. On top, you put the derivative, f prime of x. The derivative of ln something, the something goes in the denominator. The derivative of that something goes in the numerator. So regardless of what the argument is, ln something. The something, the original something goes in the denominator. You differentiate that something, that's what goes in the numerator. And I have some examples for us. The first one involves uh, the natural exponential. So I'm going to move up right there. And hold on a minute. I need to make this. Let me do something. Okay. People in my class want to snicker when I pull up my scissors and start cutting paper up here, but that's what I just did. I cut off all that heading. So find the derivative of y with respect to x if y is equal to e to the negative 11x. That's small writing, so let me rewrite it. There's the function. We want to find the derivative. I'll find the derivative in blue. 
the notice the exponent is something other than just a single letter, a uh, single variable. So the derivative of e to the negative 11x, it's e to the negative 11x times, now we find the derivative of that exponent. What's the derivative of negative 11x? So it's times the derivative of negative 11x. What did, uh, what did you say that derivative was? Yes, I agree. The derivative of negative 11x is just a negative 11. So the, I'd write the derivative like this. I'd write negative 11 times e to the negative 11x for my final answer. So that's what I would write in that little box there on my math line. Let's do another one. Okay, it's another one involving E's. So right here. Okay, so we're differentiating. Oh, hold on, let me cut off some of that paper on top. Here we're going to differentiate we're going to differentiate f of x equals 5 times e to the 2x. So let me rewrite the problem. The constant 5, we just bring that down. So we bring down the 5, and now we want to multiply by the derivative of e to the 2x. So let's see, we have a, we have our 5 here. The derivative of e to the power is e to the power, so e to the 2x. We then have to multiply by the derivative of the exponent. The derivative of 2x is 2. So we can multiply the 5 times 2 and that would give us a 10 e to the 2x for my final answer. You get in the hang of this? Okay, and another one, uh, another video, I have a, a problem where we're differentiating. Uh, it's a, I think it's a trinomial times e to the power. So that one gets sort of uh, messy, so you may want to watch that video. I think it's there. I have it listed there in your homework, if I remember correctly. Here's another one. We'll do one more, and then we'll look at examples involving uh, LNX. Here's one. There. Oh, I'll see people. Go back to that previous problem we did. Let me go back here. I want to make a uh, note. I'll see students when they're differentiating 5 times e to the 2x, they'll use the product rule. Okay, that's fine to do that. But if e is just being multiplied by a number, there's no need to. Just bring the number down. Because if you're using the product rule, it's the derivative of the first times the second. What's the derivative of 5? 0. 0. Don't write this down, but... 0 times e to the 2x plus the derivative of the second, 2e to the 2x, times the first. So really that first part of the product rule, the derivative of the first factor times the second, you really don't need that. If the factor, if e is just being multiplied by a number, all you have to do is just bring down that number. And that's what we have here as well. Let me rewrite the problem. There's the function. It's just a number times e to the power. So we bring down that number, the negative 8. We then the derivative of e to the 7x squared minus 1. That's e to the 7x squared minus 1 times, what do we have to multiply that by? 
The derivative is 7x squared minus 1. What's the derivative of 7x squared minus 1? 14x? Yes, I agree. 14x. So, oops. So we have negative 8 times 14 and oh, let's see, is that going to give me a 112? A negative 112 e to the 7x squared minus 1. Negative, wait a minute, I forgot something. What did I forget? I forgot the x. Negative 8 times 14 is a negative 112x. Let me stick that x in there for my final answer. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten the uh, hang of differentiating uh, pretty basic natural exponential functions. Now let's differentiate some uh, natural logarithmic functions, some pretty basic natural logarithm functions. Okay, so I think we'll do this one first. Here's a good one. Let me, let me get these ready. Remember, I said that the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. The derivative of the ln of something other than just a single letter x. The derivative of the natural log is something other than an x. That thing that follows the ln, it's called the argument. That goes in the denominator. The derivative of that argument is what goes in the numerator. So with that in mind, let's do this one f of x equals 3 times the natural log of 6 plus 5x squared. To find the derivative, notice it's just a number times ln. So just bring down that 3, 3 times. Now we're going to differentiate ln 6 plus 5x squared. The 6 plus 5x squared goes in the denominator on top. The 6 plus 5x squared, the original argument, is what goes on the bottom. The derivative of that uh, argument goes on top. The derivative of 6 plus 5x squared, well, the derivative of 6 is 0. The derivative of 5x squared is 10x. And I think we could clean this up. We could write it all as a single fraction. And I'm going to insult your intelligence now by reminding you that 3 is the same thing as 3 over 1. Three to, how do you multiply fractions? 3 times 10x is 30x all over. 1 times 6 plus 5x squared is a 6 plus 5x squared. For my final answer. The derivative of the natural log of a function of x, the derivative of the argument goes on top, the original argument goes on bottom. And I have one more I want to do. One more example I want to do. Here it is. Find the derivative of the function. I'm going to write this a lot bigger, okay? y equals ln. 6x to the 9th plus 5x all raised to the 5 thirds power. Now, don't write down what I'm about to do, okay? But we say, well, that's a natural logarithm. So 6x to the 9th plus 5x to the 5 thirds, th that argument goes on bottom. What goes on top? We have to differentiate all of that stuff right there. So that would require the generalized power rule. The derivative of 6x to the 9th plus 5x to the 5 thirds goes on top. There's an easier way to do this. When you saw logarithms way back, wherever you saw it, if you saw them in Math 1320, if you took Math 1324, we uh, uh, reduced, uh, we uh, work with the properties of logarithms in that course. So 
there was something involving, there was a property of logarithms that involved exponents. It said that if you have power on the argument, it's called the power rule for logarithms, you can pick that power up, move it down, and write it as a factor. This is one of those times where rewriting the logarithm will make the entire derivative much easier. Now that's not a derivative rule, that's just the power rule of logarithms. Power rule of logarithms. And I'll make a note that that you would have seen that in your prerequisite course for this course here, either whether it was Math 1314 or Math uh, 1324. I know we do it in Math 1324, so. Now, if you don't remember uh, those that power uh, rule, you might want to just make a note. If you have a logarithm with a, a power sitting outside the entire argument, it has to be applied to the entire argument. That 9 isn't being applied to this entire argument, so we can't bring down the 9. The argument that's applied to the, the exponent that's applied to the entire argument, you can move that down. And then the derivative part of this will fall out very quickly. What do you do with the 5 thirds? You bring it down. It's just a number. And now we have a fraction. The derivative of ln 6x to the 9th plus 5x. That's a 6x to the 9th plus 5x on bottom. What goes on top? What's going to go on top? It's the derivative of that stuff. So that would be what, a 54 x to the 8th plus, what's the derivative of 5x? Just a plus 5. So, oh, let's see, is there anything we can do there? There really isn't, is there? I was thinking there'd be a common factor of x, but there's no common factor of x that we can cancel. And can we cancel those fives there? No, they're not. It's not in factored form. You know something? Probably the best thing we could do. I think the answer would look best if we just distributed the five over the uh, 54x to the eighth plus five. That'll give me a 270x to the eighth plus 25 on top. And on the bottom, distributing the 3, that'll give me an 18x to the 9th plus 15x. And I think that's the best we could do. Okay, and I have some other videos where I'm working some more uh, uh, problems involving differentiating natural exponents and natural logarithms. E's and L's. And so I'll let you uh, absorb this, and I think I'm going to take a break. Bye-bye.